Right you Nwas, line up and get ready. Monkey here has improvised an idea like none other. A comparison between the Oblivion Dark Brotherhood versus the Skyrim Dark Brotherhood. How Talos damn original is that for you? And don't think I didn't see that wee little I play in Baby Boo Novice difficulty comment because you be sure I didn't. I've decided not to berate you but to tell you that you all suck together equally as one and I'm glad you know. And today my comrades I'm more lore directed video on these two powerful games and their wannabe factions and this is a battle between wannabes. It's like if you throw two sausages at each other over and over till one of them rips. But the sad part of the story is they collide at such speed and impact they both break and you are left with two broken sausages and you realise who gives a f because it's a video game and obviously Morrowind's the best. But today we focus on Oblivion and Skyrim, so me and my eek here decided to travel between the two games and investigate to see which one is the inferior one and well my friends, that's what we're about to do so sit back and relax. If you have suggestions for another video you want to see, please leave them below. I'm on a creative binge and I want to keep creating so keep allowing me to <laughs> steal your ideas and just know I love you immensely for it. <laughs> First let's start off with a very very quick recap on both Dark Brotherhood quest lines and by quick. I really do mean it. But let's start with a stupid flight. Go away. Let's start with Oblivion and move on to Skyrim after. So in Oblivion by killing any random person you will be approached by Lucien Lachance who will invite you to join the Dark Brotherhood only after killing Rufio in some random inn down south in Cyrodiil. Who goes down there anyway? Once you do that you get invited to the sanctuary where you meet all these cool assassins who are going to be your buddies and lifelong pals for about three to four hours. Then the quest line is complete but you will do contracts. You start with Mr. Vampire Face when you move on into the sanctuary and then you move on to Mrs. Lizard Face and then you move on to Big Boy Lucian's Face. Then you find out there's a traitor and spoiler alert, Big Omega, spoiler alert, one, two, three, you wipe out everyone. You then start doing dead drops for Lucian and it turns out halfway through doing them, after being approached by angry Lucian, you've been killing off the black hand and oh look, the traitor is still out there and you suck. You wiped out the sanctuary of people you grew up with, invested love into and you threw it all away for some exposition. You sick puppy you. But moving on, you do a series of quests and eventually find the traitor and kill them. You come back and the black hand thought it was Lucian so they tortured and killed him and you get promoted to leader and boom, the guy who wrote this quest line wrote Fallout 4's main story. That is a scary thing to consider. Next up we have Skyrim's very lengthy and cool quest line about the Dark Brotherhood and I really want you to pay attention because there are some serious details when trying to understand how this whole storyline works. Right, begin. The Dark Brotherhood isn't in the game for 95% of the quest line, Astrid is a sociopath with social issues, Cicero is more annoying than the Adori fan, but is also not the Adoring fan, and Three Dog doesn't work radio no more. Did you get all that? Good, because I'm not arsed going over this awful storyline. But now you know about the Dark Brotherhood in both games. Let's actually get serious and compare some elements of the two against one another. Oblivion's Dark Brotherhood questline is filled with love, compassion, dedication, making friends, betrayal and death and it's all compiled in a well paced and well done story where everybody is given at least some significance. The plot twist of the dead drops being changed was something nobody would honestly expect, it really did come out of nowhere and I never even considered somebody was changing stuff around to fool me into killing off powerful members. Wiping out your own sanctuary was pretty on the spot and something I myself was a bit taken back by. I was like, I've done all these contracts with my fellow members and now you want me to go in and just betray them all? Jesus. Then you kill the actual traitor and Lucian gets killed. Like, Jesus. That is some irony that nobody should have to endure and there's just so much emotion in such a short quest line. It's well rounded and for me, quite interesting. Now with Skyrim you have the quest line focused on this family who don't follow most of the old Dark Brotherhood's ways and the quest line will be mostly centered around Astro the leader and Cicero the keeper of the night mother. You will do contracts until Cicero arrives, a very interesting but annoying jester who Astrid is extremely paranoid of. These two keep clashing heads and you 
can't seem to find out if Cicero's intentions are good or bad in the end. Cicero goes mad one day, attacks them in the sanctuary and escapes to another secluded but abandoned sanctuary in the middle of nowhere near Dawnstar. You can go find him yourself and choose to kill him or not. The thing is, why? He hasn't actually done anything bad. He's just not liking Astrid, which he has every right not to and he is a little bit crazy but he hasn't committed any foul crimes or anything that I'm aware of so I don't really get this part at all but like he's annoying so I guess that's enough for me. You do a few more things and oh look the Empire is trying to kill you because lo and behold Astrid betrayed you and tried to sell you out for the safety of the sanctuary and well like all Imperials they lied and attacked anyway. All the sanctuary but the little girl, Vampire and Nazir are dead and Astrid confesses and you become the leader in the Dawnstar Sanctuary and life goes on. You are now the leader of the seventh thing you encountered in Skyrim. Now Skyrim was just predictable, most of the characters are pretty unlikable and I'm not just saying that for the sake of it, nobody likes Astrid, she just comes off as arrogant and annoying and never really evolves in the friendship. The the questline itself wasn't the most interesting and Cicero was, I suppose, the only good thing to come from it but to me, Oblivion definitely won me over when it came to the story. Now I'm going to be honest guys, straight off the bat, this doesn't even seem like much of a contest when it comes to contracts because Oblivion has more for you to do with multiple ways to do most contracts and that's just a fact. Skyrim has some interesting contracts like the marriage mission in solitude or well yeah, the marriage mission in solitude or maybe assassinating the emperor. Going through the boat is pretty fun I guess but a lot of them are crap. They are just people you go find in random locations like a bandit here and there and eliminate but most of the story focused on linear missions to go through. Like the one where you pretend to be the gourmet, it could have been so much more in the end. In Oblivion, you literally have a mission where you and a few others are put in a house and told there is treasure hidden somewhere. But the plot twist, you are an assassin sent to kill all of them and it's like a game of Cluedo. You kill them in any order and watching the different reactions is just so much fun. It's such a creative mission, one of my favourite missions in all of gaming. Seriously, this mission deserves all the praise it gets through the game. Unlike in Skyrim, every contract in Oblivion has an actual meaning and a good description of what you have to do to achieve your goals and there's way more of them than the ones you get in Skyrim. It's like I said before, Skyrim has few. If Skyrim just didn't have most of the side little mini contracts focused on random people like Narfi, then it might have stood a chance but it doesn't and that marriage mission is quite good but it's a shame there isn't more to do by the end of it. So Oblivion has this hands down for me. It's a simple thing for me to choose and I'm trying to not be biased, I do love games equally but with Oblivion being my favourite, it's just the way this one goes. Oblivion gives you rewards with the chance of a second one sometimes or better quality loot depending on whether you met all conditions of a mission or not. And each mission has extremely unique loot. I'll name some for you to know. Stuff like Sufferthorn or the Black Band or the Blade of Woe or by the end Shadowmir. Great weapons and gear that can give your character that extra edge and make you feel like a fortified badass when travelling around afterwards. In Skyrim you have the same type of system but a lot of the loot is the same as the ones you get in the Oblivion, and with the contracts being more fun and diverse in Oblivion, the rewards actually feel warranted, well not so much in Skyrim. If Skyrim had more unique loot and didn't just have consistent throwbacks to Oblivion loot from Oblivion, I'd have given it some extra points, but that's not the case and I'ma give Oblivion another point, jeez this seems biased. I'm going to give Oblivion the win with this video guys. The Dark Brotherhood in Oblivion is reason enough to buy the game itself. Never mind the rest of the game. The Dark Brotherhood in it is something I absolutely adore. I do enjoy Skyrim's questline, but the characters never got to me and I just found myself loving the aesthetics of the Brotherhood in Oblivion far more. And if the Elder Scrolls 6 has a Dark Brotherhood, please be like Oblivion's. If you haven't done the Dark Brotherhood in Oblivion, but you own the game, please get around to it and stop postponing something you should have done eons ago you filthy high elves or Bosmer or Dunmer Khajiit rule yay but that is it for today's video my friends please make sure to leave suggestions for other videos in the future I do hope you enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you again in a future video I think you're all great if you liked the video you like me or you just like my content then consider leaving a like as it always helps me and if you don't like me don't like the video or don't like the content 
comment then a dislike too either way ratings help me out leave comments and suggestions and go and do something fun for the day that you think you might enjoy i hope it's sunny wherever you are and that the day is treating you well and better than you could have asked for but enough babbling i hope you all have a great day a great week great month or a great year and i'll see you in the next one